Hey folks, it's T Tuesday update 3121. This were the goals for this time. How did we do? Uh, deliver overdue paper intro. This is a, a paper I've been owing uh, the folks at the Santa Fe Institute Press since like April. And yes, yes, I finally, finally shipped a draft. Uh, Life and Computation from Statistical Physics to Emergent Physics. This is an introduction to a paper that was written by a friend, uh, Mitchell et al., uh, 1993. I mean, I read the paper at the time and, and, you know, it was very exciting and so on. So, you know, I, I felt obligated when I was invited to review this thing to, to, to not, not review it, to write an introduction for it and put it in context, explain why it's foundational and so forth. But man, it was hard. It was really, really hard. I'm not entirely sure why this kind of voice is so difficult for me. It feels like uh, I'm, I'm making judgments about uh, other scientists, other academics, and so forth that normally I try I try not to do. I, I, <laughs> I have my own little car bat stuff that I'm focusing on that I will defend as being interesting and important, whatever. Uh, uh, but finally, finally, I managed to ship this off. I still have to do a little bit more about it, but this actually took up the single biggest chunk of time, single biggest chunk of work time since the last update. So, yes, uh, uh, next, uh, select a next SQW rejection opportunity. For those who folks just joining us, uh, SQW is this little science fiction story that I wrote based on chapter two of a novel that I tried to write like three years ago for Nano Remo National Novel Writing Month. I, I decided to boil it down to a short story. I've been uh, honing it and, and trying to make it more accessible. Uh, I've got some new uh responses uh, from a new reader and you know and, and they kind of liked it so that was good uh uh but you know between the lines <laughs> that, yeah you know maybe it's uh, a little hard to follow in spots and so on but uh, uh uh i did look into what would be the next possible opportunity and the idea of this whole process was to try to sell a science fiction story like the official sell of science fiction story so that i could become a member for I don't know exactly why reason for, I guess, getting blessed by the Guild, uh, a member of the Science Fiction Writers of America, Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. Uh, um, and, you know, so I had read about the, the rules for this sort of thing. They had a list of qualifying markets that you could go to. Uh, and for associate membership, you needed to sell one thing. For uh, full membership, you needed to sell three things. So I went back to double check the list to see where I maybe I wanted to go next. And, you know, like this has all changed uh, since last Last I looked, it changed apparently in March. Uh, uh, and now the idea of having to have one uh, sold publication, that's gone. Now it's uh, my eligible for associate membership if paid work in science fiction related was $100. And uh, full membership, which I'm not after, is the same thing but $1,000. Uh, and proof of earnings will be guaranteed by affidavit. <sighs> okay, so what does this actually mean? So uh, qualifying markets, they said, you know, they're, they're changing it around to try to make a matrix because I guess, you know, they're trying to balance off between supporting the writers and, you know, getting rid of the scam publishers, but not getting rid of all of the publishers. Uh, um, so they, in long story short, they took away the qualifying list of short story markets, which is what I was looking for. But they said, you know, Science Fiction Writers of America monthly market reports, which I didn't know existed. So I went to them. I looked at the monthly, monthly market report for May 2022, and it looked really fresh. They have this big, long list of thing, places that are currently taking submissions. And that was something that I ran into when I was looking at the previous list. You know, they would have a thing. I would click on it. It would say, oh, you know, our, our acceptance period ends in November, you know runs from September to November or something like that. So these are actually all open. Uh, I clicked on a couple of them, like, you know, Beneath Ceaseless Skies, and they give you give you a nice little blurb, you know, online magazine of the literature, fantasy, post-Tolkien, and so on and so forth. So the first thing that I learned by clicking around this stuff a little bit was that, you know, except for the ones that I'd already known about, Asimov, Analog, you know, the stuff that I had previously tried, Rejection Number 1, Rejection Number 2, well, I didn't do Analog, uh, um, a lot of these things are very niche, uh, uh, like like this sort of thing, or even more specific. And it wasn't really clear that SQW, Search Quiet Wake, the science fiction story that I've got, really fit in very many of those niches, so unclear. But the other valuable point about this uh, monthly market report is that they have data fed back by the SFWA members. So for this particular one, Ceaseless Skies, uh, uh, accepted 2.3%, uh, 2.2%, and it took 
took them an average of 126 days to accept it. It's very nice that they have separate uh, 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 time period for rejection and only took 22 days to, for the 94% that get rejected. And you know, that fits perfectly with, you know, my own experience. But since I only have two rejections, I can only say something more like 30%, but clearly. So in the fact uh, for this, what would qualify as proof I was paid for myself? Whether you're a bibliography independent author, uh, um, include your statement from a publisher, uh, or here it is. If you're an independent author, provide proof of earnings on your titles through a third party platform, such as Amazon or Kobo, that details the minimum 1,000 for full or 100 for associate has been met. So it seems like, I could self-publish on Amazon, say, uh, um, and if uh, I sold $100 worth of copies of Search Quiet Wake, the, the short story, uh, uh, I could then, you know, provide proof of earnings, whatever that means, and submit that to the Science Fiction Writers of America. I mean, I'm, I'm confident to say that uh, Search Quiet Wake would count as a science fiction story, and I don't think they would argue with that. So if it was a certain science fiction story and it produced $100 in earnings, uh, uh, it seems like I would be there. Now, this seems like something that could be kind of easy to game, and I'm not sure exactly, you know, that, you know, you just get sock puppets to, like, uh, apparently all political books are all... The campaign is secretly buying all the copies to make it be a bestseller. So not clear how this actually avoids a similar trap. Uh, um, but that's the story on that. So uh, I failed to select next and last SQW rejection opportunity, but I think uh, I'm going to, we'll see about that. I'll circle back around to the end. All right, research, soft cell nucleus and self model. So yeah, uh, uh, for the last couple of updates, I've been focusing on trying to make these things used to be called gas clouds, now they're called soft cells. The idea is that they wanna be really loose, really mushy, really just continually rebuilding themselves. So it's all about robustness. So if something goes wrong, it doesn't matter. The thing is rebuilding itself all the time anyway. The challenge for doing it that way is that now when you actually want to do some kind of computation, some kind of control on top of this, it's going to be that much harder because you still have all this variability and, and uh, uncertainty and, and rebuilding going on underneath you. So, you know, the traditional approach is that you make deterministic hardware, which completely gets rid of the variability at the cost of most of the robustness, and then everything is fine. So the whole idea of indefinite scalability and robust first computation is to say, no, no, let's, let's let more of the robustness, therefore the uncertainty and the the rebuilding and the churning sur cycle surface higher toward the software into the software uh, uh, and that's what we're doing here so you know last time uh, last year it was about the plates they were quite rigid they, they healed up they had a bunch of robustness mechanisms but the soft cell is going much further than that so the uh, what we saw in the opening demo was version 15 of the, the soft cell uh, um, and what I wanted to do was actually just take a look at it briefly in the simulator where we can actually look a little bit closer uh, uh, so, okay, all right, so, so yeah, so originally this whole thing was called Gas Cloud, but uh, I thought that was a little bit of an unfortunate name, and some other folks thought it was too. Uh, so now it's Soft Cell, and it used to be that the Soft Cell was actually an element, which means it's a concrete the atom that can be made and show up in the world. Now it has been lifted up to be a quark which means it's a component of an atom because I want to have not just the cell body, what I'm now calling the protoplasm, I also want to have a cell nucleus uh, that somehow sits in the center of it and uh, will somehow control or be influenced by, back and forth by the larger protoplasm around it. Because that's the nature of how you actually get stuff done. It, you don't centralize everything, you don't serialize everything, you don't make everything deterministic, but you do it in stages. You, you you pull stuff together to say, you know, let's keep track of how big this thing is, this soft cell is. Let's try to make it a little bit longer this way and a little bit narrower that so maybe it could move. Or something, whatever it happens to be. We're still not there yet. Uh, um, so the, the new soft cell quark has a has a small number of methods of things that we do that is uh, 
to be customized. So when it's time to make a new element of the soft cell in the previous code, we would just deliberately make a soft cell element. Now we call the specific class and it gives us a nucleus or a protoplasm or whatever it is and so on. And in particular, the radius is now uh, something that can be customized. And so in fact, if we go to protoplasm, uh, so the radius of the protoplasm is 22, which is what the uh, uh, soft cell was last time. The, pro the radius of oops, the radius of the nucleus is much smaller. It's seven. Okay, and so if we take a look at this, I've got it running here. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, so hopefully the uh, CPU fans won't go crazy on this from all this stuff running at once. Whoops. Uh, uh, still doing that. All right. So I put down the seed. The seed bops around for a while. And then wham, okay, here we are. Uh, uh, so if we look at the labels on them, new for nucleus, PP for protoplasm. And so let's see if we can find, so there's M hops down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. That's how far it is from the root. And so that's five, 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 four, 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 two, three. Oh, here it is. Uh, uh, M hop zero. So that's the root of the nucleus. But the trick is, is that the protoplasm is supposed to be willing to see any nucleus as being an anchor that they can stay. As long as the protoplasm can see some bit of nucleus, they can then be a root of the protoplasm. So if we find a protoplasm here, here's one. Um, he's uh, hops two, hops two, hops three. Uh, where is the guy? So. Uh, what happens now is that the uh, the nucleus grows out to now distance seven, and it's very sloppy. And uh, you know, I keep saying, "Oh, that's terrible," but no, 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 it's a feature. It's a feature uh, um, uh, that it's sloppy because then we we have lots of degrees of freedom to work with, and then once they get the nucleus gets out to the limit, which is going to be six hops because it's one less than the max. Uh, um, if it can't see any protoplasm, it goes ahead and spawns a protoplasm root. So that as this thing goes along, uh, um, it automatically starts to fill the world uh, with the protoplasm around it. Now that means in particular that uh, all right, let's, uh, that means in particular that uh, there's more than one protoplasm that's hop count zero, meaning it's the root of the protoplasm section, and that's the uh, that's the robustness by the pound idea that uh, um, the Ringo approach with taking consensus of everybody upstream agrees, so I copy the upstream, or everybody downstream agrees, so I copy the downstream. That is not restricted to having a single root. It automatically waits for them all to come together. So we ought to be able to say that the protoplasm doesn't have a single root in the center. The nucleus has a single atom, the root in the center. Uh, uh, the protoplasm can be anywhere that it gets near the nucleus. That should be countable as a root. And once they all agree on doing something, that sort of loop, of course, it's not a loop. It's this big mush because they're all put together. So that's what we saw in the opening demo. And there's still little bugs in it where um, some of the zeros, the, the, the protoplasm roots, uh, freak out and, and destroy themselves, but then the nucleus creates more. So that's what causes that shrinking and then growing back uh, uh, as, the pro, as the nucleus edge uh, reseeds the thing. So lots more to do there. Um, and I still feel good about it. I, I still feel like uh, uh, this is taking it in the other direction, taking it in the super sloppy direction rather than in the super relatively rigid dire direction of the plate. Let's see how far we can push it. Okay. So, oh, and I'm going to run a little bit long. I'm sorry. Uh, um, so there's more folks showing up in the Discord, uh, which has got a whole new look with channels and, and uh, you know, uh, different pages. I don't even know how to say it, uh, but it's looking good. And uh, I'm really thrilled that people are finding it. There's there's folks that have possible interest in uh, maybe using some kind of MFM, maybe either code or maybe just more ideas uh, to do things. Uh, I haven't spoken to them yet, but we'll find out soon what that's about. Something to do with some kind of competition for uh, NASA or Mars Society. I don't know. Uh, uh, also got a, a diff with some bugs to get the thing building, to get MFM building on on one two twenty two oh four from uh, Professor Emily Dolson. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, 
all kinds of great stuff happening. This sort of thing just absolutely warms my heart. Uh, uh, so that's it. Uh, um, goals for next time. Uh, so I uh, learn about this whole independent author in the modern era. What does it actually take to put a book up on Amazon so that it can be read on Kindle or read or however they distribute eBooks? And if one wanted to, bought uh, as a paper copy. I would like to get the nucleus, uh, you know, actually controlling the protoplasm somehow. My original goal was to have the, the nucleus somehow this side of the nucleus say we want to be relatively squeezed in, and this part say we want to be relatively elongated so the nucleus could control the shape. We'll see what happens. And then I am putting myself on the record for next time, release Ulam 5. I, I got blocked last time I tried to do it because there was stuff I didn't understand about the whole build process to build packages, to build Ubuntu packages. And the claim now is even if we can't build Ubuntu packages, which I hopefully could figure it out, let's release it anyway, which means let's update master to get all of this stuff. And in particular, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the standard libraries, which I've been sort of carrying along in the back, which feel like standard libraries to me, but they're not there. Let's get them up. That is it. And have some fun. Thanks so much for stopping by this time. Hope to see you next time.